hi everyone uh, welcome to electronic devices classes okay um, this is a um, continuation of the module 2 class pn junction and uh, photo uh, sorry opto electronic devices we were um, having uh, lectures on pn junctions we started with the quality description of the uh, pn current uh, of current flow in the pn junction uh, we saw the uh, pn junction at equilibrium and forward bias and reverse bias conditions and uh, in the and uh, and in continuation to that we saw the magnetic charge carrier distribution in the uh, reverse bias and we came to know there is a small reverse bias current and, af uh, and after that uh, concept we moved further and we saw the uh, in reverse bias there the breakdown occurs zener breakdown occurs okay at breakdown voltages and we saw there are two mechanisms of reverse bias breakdown zener breakdown and avalanche breakdown we saw in the uh, last class about the zener breakdown okay and the zener effect hope you all um, understood the zener effect and by this time uh, i believe that you all uh, are very much familiar with the forward bias pn junction and reverse bias pn junction that is the for forward bias the p is given the positive terminal positive voltage and then is given the uh, negative voltage okay and there is a forward current flowing from uh, p to n and for a reverse bias pn junction we saw that p is uh, sorry we know that P is given the uh, negative voltage and N is given the positive voltage and there is the, there is no uh, role play of the majority charge carriers only the minor charge carriers will start to uh, play a role okay and we know that the forward in forward bias uh, PN junction the there the, the transition region um, is going to get shortened whereas in reverse bias region uh, the the transition region is going to get widened and the minority charge carriers in reverse bias in reverse bias they constitute a small current called re reverse saturation current okay and in this class we shall try to see the 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 minority charge carriers role play okay um, this is this, this is a zener breakdown uh, where we concluded the last class this is the last slide of the last class and in in today's class we will try to start with the avalanche breakdown okay um, uh, Zener for Zener breakdown, what was the condition? The PN junction should be in a reverse bias and the PN PN junction should be a heavily doped. Both the P type should be heavily doped and the N type should be heavily doped. Okay. In the first class, we when when we are glancing up at the two breakdown mechanisms, we found that uh, avalanche breakdown will occur for a few uh, volts to varying a few volts to few reverse bias volts to few thousands of reverse bias volts. Not only for that, the PN junction should be um, the p and n should be lightly doped okay we'll consider the p n junction is reverse biased and the p n junction and the p and n are lightly doped okay when this when the p n uh, then the p and n are lightly doped and the p n uh, p n device a p n junction is having a reverse bias okay the, the the breakdown mechanism the breakdown mechanisms involves the impact ionization of post atoms by energy energetic carriers okay we saw that the zener effect uh, was performing a field ionization here the, the avalanche breakdown uh, the, the, before knowing the avalanche breakdown um, we will consider the reverse bias where the reverse bias breakdown mechanism is under um, impact ionization because of likely doped okay if the carrier being scattered what carrier the minority charge carrier okay because those are the one constituting the reverse saturation current as sufficient energy okay then we know that when there is a movement of charge carriers uh, we know that the scattering mechanisms can can take place okay if the carrier being scattered and they have sufficient energy um, let us scattering can can takes place okay uh, and we saw that because of scattering events there is a electron hole pair generation correct we saw in the module one electron hole pair generation and electron hole pair recombination okay this concept is we are known ehp concept electron hole pair ehp okay um for example if the electric field e in the transition region is lost okay an electron entering from the p side may be aggregated to i enough kinetic energy uh, this slide is giving a hint about the avalanche breakdown Okay. we shall try to understand with respect to the pn uh, by drawing a pn junction and the flow of minority charge carriers okay um, and and this auxiliary 
charge carriers may cause collision what collision ionizing collision with the lattice okay we shall try to understand this concept by drawing the um, by construct the pn condition we shall try to construct the uh, energy band structure of the um, p type material and n type material okay before constructing before understanding the electron um, this avalanche breakdown effect we'll try uh, we'll try to uh, uh, draw the electronic band structure of the reverse bias which is the reverse bias spin junction is lightly doped okay and the voltage is reverse by reverse bias voltage is somewhat in order of hundreds to thousands okay now we will construct the uh, energy band structure of the reverse bias where the this is the uh, conduction energy of the p type material and the valence energy of the n type material and and this is the uh, conduction energy of the n type material and the valence energy of the n type material okay and we know that the it is with respect to the electrostatic potential barrier q into v0 plus vr so uh, so the valence the conduction energy of the n type material is in a is in a is in a at a equal at, a, at a equal line of the valence energy band of the p type material this we know can this we are knowing from the previous class as well as in the uh, quality description of the current flow in the pn connection okay um, okay and the what happens to the fermi level the p type fermi level remains as it is whereas the n type fermi level is decreased with respect to the p type fermi level okay this is a figure this is a figure where the electron uh, we are going to we, uh, this is a figure of the uh, reverse bias pn junction energy band structure this is the energy band structure of the reverse bias pn junction but here the p and n are lightly doped and the reverse bias is in order of 100 to 1000 volts okay now the zener effect will not come to picture another breakdown will come to picture that is what we are trying to understand please observe carefully please observe carefully there is an electron the valence in the there is an electron present this energy structure okay and we'll try to understand the electron volt pair relation okay you can see the electron um, when when it gains when it gains some uh, bias okay it start to move from valence band to the conduction band okay please observe the electron is moving from valence band to the conduction band and what happens and when the electron in the valence band has moved to the conduction band and all is get occupied that electron place okay uh, this is a given quickly of electron voltage generation okay and the electron which is uh, the uh, and uh, and we know we, we saw in the previous slide that because of some kinetic energy why why that synergy because of light scattering and colliding effect okay scattering and collision effect the the charge carriers will gain some momentum or will get, get, get accelerated because of and they, they gain some kinetic energy and they move okay this is an electronic an electron hole pairs created by the impact ionization okay where uh, the uh, the primary electron gained kinetic energy in the field of depletion region and creating a secondary electron hole pair by impact ionization okay the primary electron losing most of its kinetic energy in the process okay you can see the the, the electron is moving losing its kinetic energy and it's moving down towards the uh, from uh, p side conduction band to the n side conduction band similarly the hole will also gain some momentum and it will move from uh, and it will change its shape okay this is about the electron hole pairs created by impact ionization you have to write suppose to write this figure in your uh, avalanche breakdown mechanism explanation we are not in the, uh, under, uh, yet uh, understood about avalanche breakdown mechanism but this is an uh, introduction part okay we'll try to um, get to know the avalanche breakdown mechanism okay uh, uh, what, what we saw what we saw the electrons are moving from the, the charge carriers are moving and they are colliding and they are um, uh, we know that it, the, the electron may get multiplied okay a, a, a single such interaction okay results in a carrier multiplication the where the original electron and the generator what happens we, we, we in the first class in the in the sorry in the module one class we saw that in the electron voltage generation and the 
the charge carriers uh, uh, getting under the uh, influence of how they behave under the influence of electric field hope you remember we took uh, the charge carriers behavior in a random motion as well as the applying electric field okay we saw uh, the collision and scattering events and uh, the generation of the electron hole pair and the recombination of the electron hole pair okay the when uh, when when they collide okay and that interaction there is a possibility of the the another carrier getting generated okay um the, the carrier multiplication will take place the original electron and the generated electron are both swept to the inside of the are both swept to the inside of the junction and the generated hole is swept to the p side okay this is what uh, the figure one is saying okay this is the energy band structure the, the, the electron has been moved from band, valence band to the conduction band and that electron place occupied the hole and and this one electron is moving the losing its uh, kinetic energy and occupying a place and the hole is moving from towards the way from valence band to the of n to the valence band of the p what is happening the electron from the conduction band is move the electron from the p side conduction band is moving towards the electron of n n side um, conduction band whereas the hole in the inside valence band is moving to the wall of the p set conduction band what is happening the magnetic charge carriers are moving from p to n the electron uh, moving from p to n and the wall is moving from n to n to p okay is it clear shall we move to the next slide okay this is th this slide uh, was explaining the uh, sorry these few lines were explaining about the previous energy band structure okay where electron moving from P conduction band to N conduction band, okay, and valence and uh, all are moving from the N valence band to the P valence band. Okay, now we shall try. We have we have made a platform to about the electron hole pair generation and uh, magnetic charge carrier moving from one region to another region. Now it is a good time to know about the avalanche breakdown process. Okay, we shall try to construct a figure where the electron hole pairs are generated by impact ionization. We'll try to understand uh, a, uh, the primary collision, the secondary collision, and the tertiary collision. Before that, we shall try to understand about a single ion collision. Okay, uh, this we took in the module one, but we'll uh, and we'll try we'll uh, again draw, and this will become an exercise. Okay, now we are constructing a uh, PN junction the where the magnetic charge carriers are generating a, uh, leading to the electron hole pair generation um, and we can see the collision process also a single ionizing collision by an incoming electron in the depletion region of the junction this is the figure name we will give okay we will construct a PN junction okay and the left side is P in the yellow color and the in the light blue color N junction okay this is separated by a, a transition region what is the transition region between reverse pairs it is a widen it is a widen the reason we know okay the reason this is a transition region having more is wide okay and the magnetic charge carriers in the PR holes sorry sorry the magnetic charge carrier in the PR electrons the magnetic charge carrier have P in the P material in the P type are electrons and the magnetic charge carriers in the electron in the N type material are holes please observe this I am holding for a few seconds the the electron is nothing but the magnetic charge carrier in the P and the hole is nothing but magnetic charge carrier in the N okay these two plays the role here and they will make us to understand the avalanche process avalanche breakdown okay now now uh, we will we will for our understanding we will take uh, green color circle as electron and uh, brown, saffron color uh, circle as a hole okay now now uh, we know that there is an electric field constituting in the transition region okay now now the electron we uh, in the in the previous slide we saw the electron is the electron and volt pair are electron and and volt pair are getting generated how the electron and volt pair are getting generated like this okay what we saw in the energy band structure in the previous slide okay that we are plotting in the this pn junction okay the movement of electron the from the p side towards the n side the movement of electron is moving towards the n side and the magnetic charge carrier hole is moving towards the p side 
okay and and there is an electron voltage generation okay the hole is moving towards the p side from m okay so this is a, and the electron reaches the n side this is about a single uh, ionizing collision by an incoming electron in the tip collision region we in, in the previous slide we saw how the hole came into picture okay so we are not explaining here okay we saw how the hole came into picture how the electron holes were generated in the previous slide okay this is about a single ionizing collision we'll try to generalize this um, process and we'll try to see the primary collision secondary collision and tertiary collision okay let's move if this is understood and the previous slide is understood we're good to go okay now now we're considering the three collisions okay okay again we'll try to construct the p and n junctions okay both are lightly doped both are lightly doped and uh, you can see the transition region is widened okay because of reverse bias okay and the electron electron electric field is uh, uh, present in the transition region okay now the n magnetic charge field in the pr electron magnetic charge field in the uh, n uh, and the nr holes okay the magnetic charge fields are moving from p side to the n side and a collision takes place okay and new charge carrier is generated new charge carrier is generated okay when electron has been moved from one place to another and that place is occupied by the hole and we, we constituted a electron hole pair generation okay this is about the primary collision pro primary collision okay this is about the primary collision and then you can and the electron hole pair generation hp hp equation and the electron reaching the end side and this hole and this hole okay and uh, this hole is again uh, having a collision while while moving and this hole will have a collision uh, while traveling and there's a again on another hole getting generated okay the original hole when it is moving it's, it gets collided and it's and the and another hole gets generated and there's a new uh, hole electron pair generation okay this the what you what what you saw uh, earlier is the primary collision effect and now you are seeing the secondary collision effect because of the hole okay and and this electron again will when it is moving when it is moving uh, you can see the walls are reaching the field and this and this electron when it is uh, traveling towards the end and it will again have a, will have a collision and it will generate and uh, it will leads to the generation of the electron hole pair and th this is nothing but the tertiary collision okay now you can see the figures are in, in, in uh, indicating the the primary collision the secondary collision and the tertiary collisions okay uh, 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 are you all able to understand okay now now you can see that this is the primary collision this is the secondary collision effect and this is the tertiary collision effect you can see the arrow marks are indicating the electron flowing from the magnetic charge for electron flowing from p to n and the all are flowing from n to p how the how these electron hole pairs are getting generated because of the collision of the charge carriers then when when in the movement the charge carriers from p to n and n to p they collide they collide and they give rise to the new kind of charge carriers and this kind of new new kind of charge carriers leading to the electron hole pair generation and we have plotted uh, the different uh, stages of collision and we can see the charge carriers are getting multiplied what are what is happening the charge carriers are getting multiplied okay please observe the figure you need to write all the three figures for avalanche process okay this process we call it as a avalanche process how that because this we call as a avalanche process okay the degree of multiplication what is happening what multiplication happening the charge carriers are multiplied are getting multiplied because of collision effect okay uh, please have a look at the figure and slide again okay b and c are the figures uh, depicting the ionizing collision we are in the b figure is showing single ion ion collision and the b c side is showing the figure c is showing the primary collision secondary collision and tertiary collision 
okay in the figure a in the previous slide we saw the electron or pair generation okay shall we move yes um, okay um, the the degree of multiplication can become very high if carriers generated within the transition region also have ionizing collision with the lattice what we saw in the previous slide primary collision one the primary collision secondary collision tertiary collision if you continue again again the charge carriers are getting increased out by multiplication so this collision may increase for example an incoming electron may have a collision with the lattice and create an ehp this we saw in the previous figure right and this esp the it contains an electron and hole and when these electron and holes are moving they may they may get again collide and they may get create the uh, another ehp and that ehp may create another uh, may the, the charge carriers present in the may experience another collision they may create ehp like this the ehp grows is getting generated and the, the charge carriers getting multiplied each of these these charge carriers has a chance of creating a new ehp this we saw we saw in the previous slide what what we saw in the previous slide okay what we saw in the previous slide okay there's a there's a the elect, the charge carrier it is getting collided and giving rise to the new electron new charge carriers and an ehp is created this ehp is the charge carriers okay um the when these electrons in the ESP, when the, sorry when these charge carriers moving they will they may create another ehp and this ehp uh, can, can create a, another ehp we saw the first ehp second ehp and third ehp okay this is what they see the the slide is conveying okay and each of those ehp can also create an ehp and so forth what we saw in the figure a1 c what's happening one ehp is creating another ehp the second ehp is creating another ehp so like that ehp creating next ehp so the gen the creation of ehps and the charge carrier is getting multiplied we call it as a avalanche process why we are calling it as avalanche process because the pn junction is lightly doped and it is reverse bias and the voltage reverse voltage is a few hundreds to few uh, few hundreds of reverse bias to few hundreds of reverse negative voltage to few hundreds of few thousands of negative voltage okay and there is a charge carrier getting multiplied and the creation of ehp leading to creation of another ehp so we call this process a avalanche process and here the current will also increase in a right angle manner okay okay because since each incoming why we are calling avalanche process since each incoming carrier can initiate the creation of a large number of new carriers the charge carriers which are moving they are become get experience collision and they are creating new carriers okay are you, are you all able to understand fine we'll move we'll move to the next uh, next slide we'll try to analyze this uh, multiplication okay approximate analysis of avalanche multiplication why this is important in order to in order to uh, know their actual collision okay we'll try to deduce some we'll try to formulate some equation and some empirical formula multiplication formula and this is not a uh, detailed uh, derivation we'll try to uh, have in a theoretical manner okay okay assume that a carrier of either type what carrier of either type it may be electron or hole may a type has a probability p such that the probability p of having an ionizing collision with the lattice while being isolated a distance w through the transition region why ionizing collision because the p and n are lightly doped okay thus the, the we will take electrons only okay thus for um, electrons entering from the p side we will denote it as a n in since it is entering from p side okay we will call it as a in what why why in because they're entering to the entering to the transition region from p so entering we can call it as a in so what charge carrier we consider electrons so n in n in means electrons are entering to the transition region from the p side so we'll denote it as a n in similarly if we consider hole from the n region and entering towards the transition we'll call it as a p in okay if the electrons are going out from a transition region towards the n we'll call it as a n out if holes are going out from transition route to region to the p we'll call it as a p out 
okay here henin is nothing but the electrons are entering the transition region from p side okay there will be p into n in ionizing collisions what is this p into n a uh, probability because uh, one charge carrier getting collided and giving rise to another charge carrier so that probability can grow can grow can continue so so we call it as a p so probability p into n hin okay so and an ehp secondary carrier for each collision so now there is an electron entering from the p side to the transition region and giving rise to the ehp and we saw that ehp is going to get going to give rise to the another hp so uh, overall we can prob we, we can make a make a probability so probability of these electrons giving rise to the uh, hp is equal to the p into n hin okay of i made what is n in and what is p okay after the p n in collision by the primary electrons there will be the primary plus the secondary collision electrons we see we saw we know that the electron colliding colliding generating new electron and that new electron colliding and getting generate new electron this is the this is what we understood now we were we are deducing we are trying to formulate the equation so the after the p n in collision by the primary electron there will be a, the primary plus the secondary electrons okay n in okay into 1 plus p the probability was p into n in and now plus another electron getting generated so p n n in plus n in if you if you take common n in as uh, from both from primary and secondary collision we can tell there is a n in into 1 plus p electrons from primary and secondary collision the electrons in the primary and secondary collision are n in into 1 plus p okay after a collision an ehp moves effectively a distance of w with the transition region w within the transition region for example if an ehp is created at the center of the region okay that moves uh, okay with w by 2 distance okay the electron drift to the w by 2 distance and the whole drift to the w by 2 p okay what we are saying at an effective distance okay at, when we are considering center region it will move the electrons move to the uh, w by 2 and all move to the w by 2 where the electron move towards w by 2 to where to n from p to n the electrons drift uh, w by 2 distance from p to n and the uh, from transition region to towards n and the whole drifts a distance of w by 2 from transition region towards the p not with respect to n to p from transition that is why we are taking w transition width okay thus the probability that an ionizing collision will occur due to the motion of the secondary carriers is still p because the, we are considering only p as a probability now if you continue if you continue for uh, secondary to the tertiary okay we can deduce the uh, uh, the uh, the how going electrons from transition region to n region okay the n in into p secondary pairs there will be n in into p into p ionizing collisions okay and, uh, and so when it, when you simplify this there will be n in into p square tertiary pairs at tertiary collision what happens the 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 collision will become n in into p square okay so then the total number of electrons going out from the transition region to the uh, end end region okay uh, and we'll assume there is no recombination and we'll sum up all the total number of electrons um, uh, generated and original electrons which are going out from the transition region to the uh, end region after many collisions okay we have n out n out is nothing but the the number of the electrons going out from transition region from transition region to the end region okay how towards okay earlier we considered inwards why because electrons are coming from p and entering the transition now the electrons are going out from now the electrons are going out from uh, just a second from transition this is the p okay this is the transition region this time okay the electrons are going out from transition to n okay this is the transition region this is the n this is 
p so the electrons are going out from transition to n that is why it is called as n out whereas the electrons were entering from p to transition region okay Ele entering from p to transition that is we call uh, n in so n out is equal to so n out is equal to n in into 1 plus p plus p square plus p q plus so on why because at first th there was only n in electron entering the transition region and in the second collision what happens that uh, the probability has been increased from n in to 1 n in into 1 plus p and in the tertiary collision what happens it become n in into 1 plus n in into p square okay and then the fourth and uh, at the fourth collision what happens it becomes n in into p q and the fifth collision it becomes n into p four five so on at the end collision it becomes it continues it continuously going so we can take common n n in so we can write this n uh, earlier it was n in primary in the secondary it was n in into p tertiary it was n into p square at the fourth collision it was n into p q and the fifth collision it was n into p p power four so on at the nth collision it will be n into p into n okay plus one so if you take n in as common okay so we can write the n out as n out as n out is equal to n in into one plus p plus p square plus q p q plus so on okay i think i, I made myself clear how, how this equation came because of collision of electrons here n in is nothing but the electrons entering from p to a transition and n out is nothing but the electrons are moving out from transition region to the n region similarly we can write for the holes also okay mm. and electron multiplication mn how to find out the electron multiplication we'll denote it as a mn okay for um, for yeah in, in the previous slide we we, we we took that there is no recombination taking place there is no recombination taking place only generation electron volt pair generation there is no electron volt pair recombination okay uh, we will we'll stick to the simple explanation only for when when it is when it is with respect to the more comprehensive theory there should be inclusion of electron volt pair recombination but for our for our understanding we are not in, including it okay we need to include the electron volt pair recombination as well as the different probabilities for ionizing collision by electrons and volts for what for more comprehensive theory for simple understanding for simple understanding we will we'll not uh, assume uh, re electron volt pair recombination okay uh, we will di directly find out the electron multiplication mn is not is the factor for electron multiplication is denoting the electron multiplication factor okay mn is equal to n naught by n in okay we are trying to find out the electron multiplication okay n out into n naught by n in now n naught is nothing but electrons going out from transition to n region and in, in electrons entering from p to the transition region and we know that we know that it is nothing but 1 plus p plus p square plus p q plus so on how in the from the last slide we took n naught is equal to n in so we took n in in the domain and and for the division okay in order to verify this equation we'll you go in when we go the direct division approach in mn this uh, mn multiplication electron multiplication factor will be can be equated as mn is equal to 1 by 1 minus if you if you try to equate this 1 plus p square plus p cube equal to 1 by 1 minus p you can get the equation okay this equation relation of p probability p to parameter subjunction is more complicated when 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 we are implementing when we are implementing this will be this will be more complicated okay that is why we not uh, we went uh, went into the derivation and all this okay uh, we just in getting um, awareness of that what will the factor what will the uh, the equation okay when the probability p approaches unity okay you can see you can see in denominator there is one minus one one by one minus p when this p is one what happens one minus one becomes zero what is one by zero yeah it is slipping means infinity multiplication will be infinity it goes on multiplication multiplying shut up the express right jet so so when this p becomes unity okay the carrier multiplication and the reverse current go through the junction increases without limit okay without limit there is no control of the reverse saturation current increase 
so we should take care of this probability so p sh p should be less than 1 and 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 okay so we need some external circuit to limit this reverse breakdown current okay we need some external circuit to limit this breakdown current else our device may get damaged okay okay physically there is an expectation that the ionization probability to increase with increasing electric field so the, the probability should increase when there is an increasing electric field okay and therefore to depend on the reverse bias okay in the reverse bias the shear should be taken when it is p and p and n are lightly doped and the voltage is from reverse voltage that negative voltage in orders 100 to 1000 which the care should be taken the probability of electron collision and or the volt collision the magnetic charge carrier the magnetic charge carrier collision probability should be taken care okay that is why you need to take care of the electric field also we need to maintain the electric field such that it should not affect the the multiplication factor of the carrier collision okay then there is no limit of the current to control okay measurements of carrier multiplication m in junctions near breakdown lead to an ampe empirical relation okay that is m is equal to 1 by 1 minus v by vbr all to the power n you can see the multiplication the carrier multiplication is nothing but 1 by 1 minus v by vbr where v is our voltage the regular voltage and vbr is nothing but the breakdown voltage we need to control this because of this voltage value we are seeing the breakdown the sudden increase in the current so we need to limit that okay and we should take care about the n also what we said we need to take care about the probability in the previous slide now that p is been replaced by v by v vbr not only that the entire dynamic is replaced by 1 minus v by vbr all over n and n should be taken care okay where n n varies from exponent n value varies from 3 to 6 okay and depending on the type of the material it is called junction so n this n is not is not any n type material it is a exponent parameter okay it varies from 3 to 6 okay and it, it and very and that very vari end variation is depending upon the type of the mid junction is used so by this um, by this we conclude our, our the avalanche process the dangerousness of the avalanche process and how and to control about the probability p and and um, the critical reverse voltage the for breakdown increases with the band gap of the material okay reverse bias what is happening the band gap is getting increased this is what we are talking uh, what i am telling you this is what just a second the time is not coming yes what what was i uh, trying to say is this side this side i am trying to say what happens this this valence band and the conduction band valence band of p conduction and band of n can take can be at the equal level and the electron can tunnel from uh, p valence band p to conduction band n okay okay so k should be taken the critical reverse voltage for breakdown increases with the band gap of the material since more energy is required for an ionizing collision also the peak electric field within the w increases with increased doping on the more lightly doped side of the junction therefore vbr decreases as the doping increases what is it saying it is saying when we are making the p or n as uh, um, heavily doped okay the vbr value getting decreased if vbr getting decreased okay we can see the effect okay uh, we, we will try to uh, plot this uh, uh, explanation in a graphical manner okay this is the plot of variation of avalanche breakdown voltage in upgrade pn junction as a function of donor concentration in the n side for several semiconductors this is with respect to the electron okay donor concentration nd you can see the and the and the x-axis there is a donor concentration nd uh, centimeter cube per centimeter cube and on the y-axis you can see the the breakdown voltage vbr is there in volts this this is the avalanche breakdown variation for different germanium silicon gallium arsenide and kp we are not we are not going to um, 
understand how this uh, how, how this uh, is going to come we're, we're just uh, um, trying to understand about for a different uh, type of materials germanium silicon galenols and dap okay we are uh, we're trying to uh, have a look about the avalanche variation okay you can see the avalanche variation with respect to a donor concentration for germanium okay is in the order of um, some um, 50, 10 power 15 10 power 16 and in for silicon is varying okay german gallimarsen gallimarsen and uh, okay and uh, in this we can see this is this is a very uh, avalanche breakdown variation with respect to 300 kelvin and you can see the talent the tunneling effect also okay uh, from this value the, from this value 10 power 17 and 10 power 18 you can see the tunneling begins the tunneling begins here okay we are not going to understand about this figure we are not going to discuss about this figure but we are since we are talking about the tunneling so we need so we are having this uh, uh, image okay um th uh, this is the uh, according to syllabus uh, we are going to stop the year for avalanche breakdown okay um if any if any doubts if any doubts are there with respect to the um, these concepts please uh, uh, we'll try to have a discussion in the whatsapp group okay if it doubts our questions okay by this we conclude reverse bias breakdown avalanche break uh, zener breakdown and avalanche breakdown concept in the next class we shall start with the rectifier concept okay thank you all